Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Professor Ganesh, Director IT Kanpur, and the Institute community, I, Shweta Kumar, your host for this morning, would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you present here today at the 40th reunion of the class of 1981. This is a very momentous occasion, as I am thrilled to inform you that we recently celebrated 64 glorious years of the Institute's foundation. I would now like to request Professor Braj Bhushan, Dean of Administration and Acting Dean of Resources and Alumni, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. Requesting Professor Sudhir Mishra, Batch Coordinator of Class of 1981, to kindly take his seat on the stage. Request <laughs> Requesting Mr. Sharad Swaru, Batch Coordinator, to kindly join us on the dais. Now requesting Ms. Anjali Joshi, batch representative, to kindly come forward and be seated. <laughs> Last, I would like to request Professor Tarun Gupta, Dean of Research and Development, to come forward and be seated on the dais. I now humbly request all our guests present on stage to please come forward for the ceremonial lighting of the lamp, which symbolizes knowledge and wisdom. Om Shubham Karoti Kalyanam Arogyam dhan sampada, shatru buddhi vinashaya, deepa jyotir namostute. At the commencement of any auspicious occasion, jyot has been observed. The lighting of the lamp symbolizes abundance, prosperity, knowledge, dispelling darkness and ignorance. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, reunion is not about counting the number of years. Rather, it's about relieving and cherishing memories and time to be grateful for the beautiful journey you had as a student of I.D. Kanpur. Despite the years that have passed, I'm sure all of you remained young at heart. Yes? No? Yes. So why don't we begin today by relieving our old days and becoming rowdy students once again? <laughs> Let's make this 40th reunion memorable. And for that, I will request everyone to clap with me three times and shout 40 as loud as you can. Okay? 40. Actually, it reached only till Delhi. And I later it reached only till Dubai. Let's try to reach all the continents. Is that correct? Now, this batch saw Gavaskar hitting double century. Is, it, is that correct? Yes. So show me that George and the temp with IT's tempo this time. Yes. 40. 40. <laughs> Once again. Thank you. So let me <laughs> So let me take you on a short trip down the memory lane. 43 years ago, more than 240 young boys and six girls from across India decided to embark on a challenging journey away from the comforts of their home all the way to a city called Kanpur. Now named Kanpur, to be a part of this prestigious institute called IIT Kanpur. Yeah. 
You came with a baggage, and this institute bestowed you with a package. Package of prestigious foundation, integrity, pride, and unbreakable strong bond. Tuition fees kuch 200 rupay ki thi. Hostel rent 100 rupay ka. Aur mahine ka mess bill 150 rupay ka. Chai 8 ki thi. Samosa 12 ane ka. Capstan 6 ki. Aur Golden Eagle 7 ka. It was an era of Shami Kapoor, Rajesh Khanna, Amitabh Bachchan, Sh Sharmila Tagore, Hema Malini, Rekha. <laughs> Major blockbusters were Shole, Amaravar Anthony, and Manoranjan. And the <laughs> and the famous song which demanded maximum number of repeats was <laughs> Monica oh my darling <laughs> tunes of carpenters beetles also would play in the wings and common room empty ki chai was always special and most of you could be found eating in Red Rose or ordering Shashi Canteen Ka Hakka Cha. Major attractions in city were Chungfa or Mithai Bole To? Bengal, what I know, Bengal sweets. <laughs> Famous jargons of the Adda point were Bakat, Fudda, Siud, Fanda Gol, Tail Ho Gaya. I don't think anybody would have missed visiting Regal and Heer Palace for entertainment. Movies in L7 on Saturday and Sunday night was a major attraction. And the most common phrase during the movie time was, repeat and focus. Talash rehti thi Shishu Palji ki, as he would do odd jobs at student gym khana. Aur intazar rehta tha Shiv Charan ji ka. Shiv Charan ji bole to? Mail messenger who would bring admission letters, scholarship letters, appointment letters, including Shadi ke proposal letters <laughs> with girls or boys photograph inside it. Tiwari ji paan, tiwari paan ka chalu khata almost sab ka tha. Or Sundar Lal Putan Lal ka pata almost sab ko rehta tha. As they were the dhobis who would provide overnight service. The brawl between Hall 2 and Hall 3 had always been famous for various reasons. <laughs> I have four or five reasons, I'll tell you. Battle of supremacy would range right from competing during the cultural fest to sports, to stealing of fuses, to mass shouting from rooftop during blackouts, to <laughs> gali competition. <laughs> I can only, it only reminds me of famous quote by Atal Bihari Bajpayee ji. Kaun Kaurav, Kaun Pandav, Tedha Sawal hai. Dono or Fela, Shakuni ka Koot Jaal hai. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our nation went through a tough period during that time from the unsettling withdrawal of emergency to, to, to the return of Ms. Indra Gandhi to power and the sorrowful passing of Mr. Sanjay Gandhi. This batch too had their own roller coasters as they encountered two strikes, one of which involved mess workers and the other one I would rather call it, call it a Krantikari Upadrav, where hockey sticks came out and our young chaps put a good show of solidarity as it could have led to restrictions and I don't know what not. This exemplary batch displayed efficient management skills during those testing times and stood unwavered and steadfast. A studious batch to still remember theatrical lecture of atomic hypothesis by Professor C. N. R. Rao, and to top it all, recalls the author of books like Thomas, Kresik, Resnick, and Halliday. 
a sport-loving batch who dared to compromise on their exam preparation to follow Gavaskar's double century as it fell during exam time. Thanks to transistors and all India radio, which kept the adrenal rush going. And last but not least, a blessed batch. Because 240 ladko me do hi ladke kabil nikle, kyoki as two girls chose their life partner here. I can't personally share all your recollections of IIT Kanpur, but we talked with few of your classmates to try to get a closer look at the, of the class of 1981, whose members have such nicknames. I request those who are present here to kindly acknowledge by raising their hand. Gyani. Gyani is here? Gyan Angela. Baket. Suraj Prakash ji. So Gyani was Gyan Indralal ji. So you have to raise hand. Sure, sir. We'll make it happen. Okay, thanks. Laddu. Mota. Is he here? Gujju. No, but the other mota is here. <laughs> Gujju? Muku? Pandey? Met? Mukul Guru? Any guess for someone who would do third grade torture to seniors? Okay, you, you took it. Any guess for someone who would do third grade torture to seniors? No, no. Either that way, you're Terry and you. <laughs> <laughs> Suraj Prakash. <laughs> Nagi. These are just few I know. This is all I have from the treasure of the memories of class of 1981. I hope I got my facts right. On this, GK, GK. Oh yes, yes. I'm sorry. GK is there. GK is there. Bogey, okay. Sure, sir. In your next reunion, I'll have these two names. <laughs> On this beautiful day, let's all remember to laugh, share fond memories, and make new memories that we can talk about at our next reunion. We are so pleased that we gathered here today in person, something we, did, we do not want to take it for granted anymore. Now, without taking any more of your precious time, I would like to invite Professor Tarun Gupta, Dean of Resource, Research and Development, to kindly address the gathering. Thank you. A very good morning to all of you. Good morning. So, uh, I am Tarun Gupta. I am currently Dean of Research and Development. And uh, Professor Ganesh, who is officiating director, he is outside the country, so for today I'm like acting director. And uh, I'll walk you through some of the developments that IIT Kanpur has made in the last several years. And this is like uh, the picture we want to show, but of course you have your own memories of the institute and you have been in touch with us through various forum. And whatever you hear from your fellow uh, mates or like maybe through the media, Thank you. And uh, so let me walk you through some of the facts and some of the uh, success stories of IIT Kanpur. And then uh, there are other members of the community which will give you more insight about each and every aspect of IIT Kanpur. I know you have been experiencing the institute as a student and you have certain perspective but when uh, I'm trying to project, it is what the bird's eye view of the institute, and we will zoom in and zoom out 
uh, into different sections of the uh, aspects, both academic as well as research and administrative aspects of this institute. So I know your passion and love for the institute is um, unwavered and it's true. That's why you are here. I would like you to enjoy the company, the, all the memories that you have of the institute. At the same time, um, I would request to be you to have very open heart, interact with the students, and uh, maybe like give us feedback how we can take it forward, uh, where we can improve, how we can engage you more actively as far as to take this institute forward. And uh, I think that is what the whole point is. And I thank uh, Professor Braj Bhushan, who is here, uh, Dr. Kapil Kaul, who is uh, leading his team, and uh, various other faculty members, Professor Sudhir Mishra, I think last night he had a dinner at his home. So since we are from the same department, I am from civil engineering department, so I know like uh, this must have been a very good, enjoyable moment for all of you. So now I'll take you through, uh, this may look little dry, but uh, if you want to stop me, just raise your hand, I'll stop and try to explain things in between so that uh, it's not a monologue and we can have discussion at a healthy level. Thank you. So this picture, I uh, color next. Okay, sorry. So uh, this picture, you can see that it is from the library, and this uh, fountain area has been, I'm mean, like refurbished and has been designed in such a way that it has actually augmented the aura and the ambience of this place because this is the iconic, the <laughs> library building is, and we want to retain it that way. Uh, there were several challenges to keep it structurally viable and efforts have been made to um, like kind of reinforce the structural aspects of this building and uh, recently it has been painted also so now if you visit you will see that uh, not this kind of picture but actually the new painted version of this this is what it's showing the contrast we started with the first computer coming I'm like to a major institute within the country, and now we can actually brag about that we have a 1.3 petaflop supercomputer called Param Sangnanak, uh, facility at IIT Kanpur, and uh, several research or out, uh, breakthrough has happened because of presence of such computer supercomputing facility at IIT Kanpur. Just to give brief numbers, so we are. A uh, thousand acre campus, about nearly 600 faculty members, about 9,000 students, and we have a now a swelling and 43,000 plus alumni base. Several engineering, science, and humanities and interdisciplinary programs are there. The one in red uh, have been recently added, uh, including sustainable energy, engineering, design cognitive science, space planetary, and astronomical science and engineering. We have been venturing into the e-masters because uh, this is what uh, the new times tell that we have to increase our outreach to larger society and those working professionals who cannot take time off from their uh, busy jobs can attend and we are able to cater to them in e-masters and some of the highly in demand courses like cyber security, uh, business leadership, uh, sustainable construction practices and project management, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and then uh, climate finance and sustainability. These are very popular courses and uh, we are seeing almost exponential growth in e-masters. This is also a good way of revenue generation for the institute currently. Uh, there have been several changes in our UG and PG curriculum and throughout IIT Kanpur has been a leader in terms of providing the flexible education system. And you can talk to the undergrad student and here in IIT Kanpur, we have always emphasized on science and humanities being very important for engineering people. So al along with the core engineering and science education, humanities and now economics has become a core which has actually given multi pronged educational aspects to the undergrad and uh, postgraduate students, and that has actually helped them in facing different kind of challenges in their job and once they come out in the real world. 
In terms of faculty strength, uh, under the leadership of uh, our recent uh, former director, Professor Abhay Karandikar, uh, we have grown the faculty strength all the way from 400. Now we are touching 600. We want to go uh, to a healthy level in the near future. I'll project some of the numbers there. Uh, talking about the laurels that different faculty members have brought to the institute. So there have been important prizes like Padma Shri Award, Infosys. Uh, recently, two of our uh, faculty members have got Infosys Award. Then in terms of TWAS Fellowship and in terms of Foreign Associate for U.S. National Academy of Sciences, Goldner Prize, Fulkerson Prize, TWAS Prize, uh, Nazi Scopus Young Scientist Award, Humboldt Research Award, and then, of course, the most coveted Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar <coughs> Prize. So this data is from 2000 onwards, and we see that a lot of faculty members have done well, and they are known as world leaders in their field. In terms of research and development, now it has actually expanded in several levels. In fact, we have several Section 8 companies which are kind of offspin of research and development. So there is an office of Dean of Research and Development. Apart from that, we have FIRST, which is a Section 8 company. We have Technopark. We have C3i Hub and several other aspects which uh, in terms of incubation and engaging with the industry that we have been doing a wonderful thing in taking out and making both applied research and doing something for the societal need. So for a long time, IIT Kanpur was, or IITs in general were questioned like so much money has gone into it. What has it produced apart from like quality education and alumni base? So now we are actually reaching out to the lower strata, to middle strata, and to a larger section of the society through the research which is applied and is meaningful for the growth of the country. Uh, we are proud that going from the past, we were like ranked seventh, fourth, and then in terms of innovation, last year we were number one. And in terms of overall ranking, we have got a fifth position, and engineering, we got fourth position. So uh, kudos to all the students, faculty, staff who have been working tirelessly for IIT Kanpur to achieve that status. There are some of the uh, highlights of research and some of the technologies which have found their way into the market. Some of the successful ones are in terms of uh, national blockchain for e-governance, for securing uh, foolproof way documentations and various other records. There has been a technology for anti-counterfeiting technology is called Checo, then a water testing device, a PM1 sampler, uh, then we have an haptic watch for the blind. Uh, there's a national air quality index developed for the country. Uh, there's a soil testing mechanism for finding out the uh, chemical analysis of the soil to know its uh, <coughs> importance and then what kind of additional inputs are required. Artificial skin uh, development using like uh, uh, plant-based material, then electronic fuel injection system to enhance the uh, fuel efficiency of locomotive engine. There have been a very important milestone we recently reached. So we have filed altogether 1,000 patents, out of which 400 have been granted. And we have a translational or technology transfer of the order of 14%, which is probably the highest in the world. And uh, there are several devices which have recently been licensed uh, to, in fact, uh, there is a news I can share like, um, uh, in terms of assistive technology transfer, uh, we have also won a recent award, and Professor Braj Bhushan's technology is also part of it. So we can congratulate him for that. Yeah. Uh, in terms of incubation and startup, IIT Kanpur, within a very short period of time, we have reached to become the, one of the leaders in the country in terms of incubation. Several countries are born, I'm like, are about to become Unicorn, which has started and have got hand-holding and mentorship from our faculty members and in-house activities at IIT Kanpur. Uh, some of the notable ones are Pool, uh, Nokarob, uh, Nokakar uh, Robotics, and then Krishnam Technologies, and so on. Apart from that, uh, there are 32 faculty uh, entrepreneurship 
companies which have which are thriving and are about to take place uh, within the IT Kanpur. So we have a very flexible entrepreneurship policy, both for faculty and also we have now introduced for students, then they can take a semester break to try out on incubation or entrepreneur activities and come back if it is successful or not, and institute will give a lot of support to them. So these kind of very, very liberal uh, policies are there in the institute currently. These are some of the uh, prizes and different laurels and recognition that some of these startups have got uh, across the country and also abroad. So uh, you might be aware of the ventilation uh, ventilator project, which was like done during the harsh COVID time and where like even like coming to the office was a big deal, like and the campus was like uh, abandoned at, at least the academic area, you could see very few people the, and there were like a lot of dry leaves and garbage and everything was accumulating because for so long we were having lockdown. Still these people managed to come up with the uh, need of the hour, which was a ventilator, it was not available. And they came up not just a basic minimum device, but something which was a top notch in terms of technology, in terms of uh, usage, in terms of patient care and reliable. That's why it became such a big news, and there's a book also on this. Apart from that, we have several Center for Excellence. Uh, we have Center for Nanosciences, which has also uh, developed several kind of uh, important uh, researches, including the development of N95 and N99 masks. There are several microfluidic devices which has been possible because of the uh, research which has gone into it. So recently uh, there are devices which have come out including testing for uh, dengue and uh, screening of oral cancer using the saliva and uh, the biomolecules which are present there. Apart from that we have National Center for Flexible Electronics. So I'm happy to announce that only yesterday uh, the first phase was completed and we have got grant for the next phase which is another 80 crores for next five years. So this center has been instrumental in coming up with several technologies. So the mandate of the center itself is to come up with technologies which can include industry and academia. academia and then uh, it is of benefit for the societal at large. So several technologies are going to be imbibed in uh, our armed forces and also um, maybe in DRDO labs and so on. Apart from that, we have very successful center for cybersecurity. Uh, you all understand the need of cybersecurity in our country and worldwide. And this center is one of its kind and among the leaders as far as our country is concerned. So uh, I talked about the blockchain and few other technologies which have come out recently from that. And recently we inaugurated this Meta, sorry, Meta Family Center for Engineering and Medicine this is again a unique initiative at IIT Kanpur where a uh, good harmony between the technologists and people working on medicine are shaking hands together and coming up with meaningful technologies both in terms of uh, translational aspect and also doing the core research. Three verticals are regenerative medicine, molecular medicine and digital medicine. Then uh, IIT Kanpur has been instrumental along with IIT Madras uh, in terms of developing indigenous 5G uh, system. And next month there is a technology transfer uh, <coughs> function which will happen in IIT Madras where like a major group is taking this technology all the way to the commercial aspect. So that is a big success story from IIT Kanpur. Even uh, our prime minister had tweeted about uh, this success story. Uh, we also have this new center for developing intelligent system and the unique thing about this is uh, it is a slightly, you can say out of box thinking that within an academic area we always struggle in kind of retaining very high, highly skilled kind of staff. So this center is able to do that in terms of outsourcing and in terms of retaining the manpower for a short period of time depending on the projects that they get. So they get very unique pro projects where like uh, advanced level software or 
networking program have to be developed. They hire people who are leaders in this, uh, in terms of IT and software and algorithm development. They hire them for a short period of time, finish the project, and then they go back to their parent organization. So this is the kind of flexibility that IIT Kanpur has provided um, within the norms of uh, government of India that we have to follow. Uh, there have been several uh, excellent technologies. So recently, UP government has given a major chunk to open a center for excellence in uh, UAV, unmanned aerial vehicles. So Professor Abhishek from Aerospace is leading this initiative. And he also has a, a startup company where he is engaging with the defense and other people in a, a healthy way. In terms of... Uh, CP grams, so this was uh, in the news for a long time. Uh, Professor Shalab and Professor Nishit Srivastav, they have been working with the grievance portal of Prime Minister. So using natural uh, learning algorithm, so NPL algorithm, they have actually tried to reduce the load of the grievances and the uh, <clears throat> various kind of uh, uh, information which comes to the Prime Minister office if it can be processed and the gist of those complaints can be taken in an effective manner and then using AI and ML, they can come up with what are the key areas in which the grievances are there. So it has led to better governance and many states are now going to adopt this thing so that uh, the voice of the common man can reach the administration in a very fair manner and in a systematic manner where they can take and implement changes so that their life is benefited from that. <coughs> Apart from that, uh, we have also this year opened a center for excellence with DRDO. The idea was that so far we were applying for different uh, <coughs> kind of projects. It was in a scattered way and then uh, DRDO being a government organization, it takes their own sweet amount of time to award. And by the time the technology is developed, we are little far uh, far behind than the rest of the world because it takes so much time before DRDO can actually implement that technology back into the system. And that's why they are relying too much on the people from abroad or technology from abroad. So under the Pradhan Mantri Make in India and Skill Development Program, we have opened this uh, DRDO Center for Excellence where there is a nodal person uh, who is the director of uh, this center, Sanjay Tandan, he is housed there. All the projects are collated and then uh, there's a fast track mechanism by which these projects can be awarded, hand holding can be then, and then DRDO can be checking phase wise what are the progress and how they can implement in different agencies these technologies. Apart from that, uh, in the last several years, IIT Kanpur has done wonderful in terms of technology transfer, in terms of the revenue, so it's in several crores in the last few years from the technologies which have been developed by students and faculty members within the institute. So one of the success stories of Loris Lab, so in terms of gene therapy, uh, <coughs> Professor Janendra Rao has developed from his lab, uh, four such technologies have been transferred to Loris Lab. Not only that, Loris Lab has uh, shown interest and they have taken uh, one fo full floor in Technopark uh, with a I'm like committed funding of nearly 100 crores for next several years. Uh, we have also partnered with a uh, hospital, in this case, uh, Kashiram Super Speciality Hospital, UP government, and a private company called Karkinos Healthcare. This is taking the uh, <coughs> technology, or like you can say, the computational aspects of IIT Kanpur, the medical acumen and the space and the amount of patients which come to the hospital and the technology of molecular diagnostic from Karkinos so that we can do fast training, bulk screening of cancer patient and we can do early detection and then that will save life and also the medical cost of several of the resident within the state of UP. So this is a major initiative from our institute. Uh, recently, uh, there's a new of Cortex School of Sustainability. I think Kapil can tell more about it because we are going to formally launch in Delhi on 6th of December. Uh, this, there is a <clears throat> need for 
doing sustainable de development. All of you have seen the news of Delhi being in the hotspot in a negative way, especially during the month of November, year after year. And uh, there are always blame game here and there. But as a society, as a whole, we need to move towards sustainability aspects. And development cannot come with the, uh, so much problems or so much uh, ramification on the environmental aspects. So that's why we are trying to come up with a Codex School of Sustainability. There are several departments, several faculty members, more than 70 faculty members who have shown willingness to come together and come up with a program. And I think for the future generation, uh, this will become an attractive educational aspect, uh, both for UG and PG level. Apart from that, uh, there have been generous support of various alumni in coming up with centers which have been doing societal benefits, which are doing some translational or meaningful work. And uh, of course, we have been get getting alumni funding for scholarship, for uh, faculty uh, <clears throat> research setup, for building, for sports facility, various kind of help we have been getting from alumni. They have been mentored to students and have given very important networking aspects for budding uh, graduates to find the uh, connections worldwide. But apart from that, uh, this is, these are some of the centers which have been uh, very, uh, uh, I can say, uh, with open heart and very generously supported by some of the alumni. Uh, we have got the Ranji Singh Soji Roji uh, Siksha Kendra, which is uh, committed to empowerment and entrepreneur skill development for underprivileged uh, women and other section of the society. They also run this program. I think uh, you probably will have a visit during the lunchtime to this center so you'll learn more about uh, the outreach activities of this center. Apart from that, um, Jeet Vindra unit operations. So we got uh, generous, generous grant to upgrade the UG and PG lab of chemical engineering. And then uh, we also have J. Pulur non-invasive uh, brain stimulation laboratory. Uh, funded by one of the alumni. In terms of international relations, so in the recent past, uh, we have been very active and several, uh, you can say, uh, road shows have been done mostly in the Northern America and then in Australia uh, by our uh, higher administration, including the director and several deans. And they have, uh, I'm like, I, I'm just amazed uh, Kapil has been part of it, how they were able to hop from one city to another and they have covered so many cities in a very short period of time and maybe engaged with several alumni and uh, friends of IIT Kanpur, prospective donors, philanthropists, uh, who are able to uh, engage with us in a meaningful way and they could see that IIT Kanpur has the right intention and the talent which can actually translate into something big. And that's why we have been able to get a uh, lot of funds raised. And I'm sure like, uh, we will be able to raise uh, much more in the future with these activities. So I'll just show you some pictures uh, rather than going through. Uh, there have been um, a major initiative with our Tandon School in New York University, then with Taiwan Chautong University, then Rice collaboration we have and then University of Alberta and Lathrop Academy. And currently our officiating director and his team is in uh, University of Melbourne to engage with their medical school so that uh, the medical school which is going to come up at IIT Kanpur will have a wider collaboration right from the start and we can have hand-holding and meaningful collaboration to come up with the right kind of technologies required for our country. In terms of infrastructure, uh, you may have already noticed that this is not the campus what you uh, were here for, and it has changed quite a bit. Of course, with the need of uh, increasing students and faculty members, we have to come up and be uh, at par to provide the infrastructure. Uh, some of the hostels conditions are still not appropriate, and we would like to have uh, additional, maybe 3,000, 4,000 more uh, accommodation for these students so that those who are staying in triplet will get eased out. Those staying in doublet can ease out and have not only very high class educational aspect, but also in terms of living condition, they are comfortable in the campus. So uh, these are some numbers in terms of what is our 
total built up area, so 1,66,000. We plan to augment another 1 lakh uh, square meter with the ongoing projects. Right. Thank you for your question. Since I was green cell chair a few years back, so I can answer that more effectively. So we had, uh, using GIS and then several ground-based survey, we had done a mapping of the whole campus, and we had nearly 75 to 80% of the campus as a green reserve. So only in the 25% of the area we have actually built. And what you would have noticed that earlier for, I think about just five years back, we were not going anything above uh, five plus one, so G plus five or G plus six was our like limit, but now we are going much higher with that, and for that, um, like we have been awarding these infrastructure project to companies like LNT, who are the leaders. So, for example, for the medical school, uh, this award has been given to LNT. Uh, I'll show you the map in a moment. So, your concerns are valid, and we also would not like to live in a concrete jungle because the moment you come from the city into the campus, there's a three degree advantage you get because there are more than 45,000 trees within the campus. So yes, uh, we have that advantage. We want not like to uh, I'm like leave that. And I'm like, it, it won't make sense that we are coming up with Cortex School of Sustainability and we are doing something which is totally against that. So, right. Thank you for raising that question. So uh, I'll just show you some pictures of uh, some of these buildings are ready. Some of them uh, are going to be commissioned soon. Uh, Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex, one of the uh, biggest, uh, I think, like uh, building in the campus so far. Engineering Science Building, which was initially a national aerosol facility, but we built four more floors on top of it, and then uh, it is, I'm like, currently Technopark is occupying that, but soon several other departments will be uh, moving into this. Then Engineering Science Building 2, Engineering Science Building 3, which we also call Earth Science Building, then extension of old core lab for the uh, mostly chemistry labs are there, and then Central AC plant to cater to the air conditioning aspects. Uh, we have come up with uh, almost 112 of uh, type 3 apartments. Uh, the Mehta Family S Center for Engineering in Medicine, which has actually extended the BSB lab, so we have more area because the number of faculty members have doubled from the time that the BSB building, uh, very generously supported by Arun Shuri from his MP lad, was made. And now we have more space for such faculty members. Hall of Residence 14. Another few Hall of Residences are coming up. Uh, then we have Research Complex, Techno Park, and Faculty Building Avenue, NX. So all the uh, administrative uh, departments will move to this building, which you see right at the entrance on the left side as you enter into the academic area. So I think this will be commissioned soon, and by summer this year, we will all migrate to that building. Apart from that, uh, there have been uh, like, uh, some of the rapid constructions which were done for both girls hostel and boys hostel. Uh, and these apartments were made within a very short period of time of uh, six to seven months. And then uh, this is the techno park, I think like, uh, did they had a tour there today? No. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, alumni engagement, I think uh, Kapil will uh, bombard you with more numbers and maybe in a different way, camouflaged. <laughs> I'll give you the raw numbers here. So uh, we have been fortunate uh, to have come up with this idea of IID Kanpur Development Foundation. 
and this has led to a quantum change in terms of alumni engagement and both in terms of the corpus generated for the institute. So where the numbers were in uh, single or double digits, now it has gone to three digits. And um, I must congratulate the team of Kapil Kaul and his whole team. And apart from that, several alumni, several faculty members have worked tirelessly to come to this level. And I hope we come to this moment. Uh, so uh, as you can see, uh, Kapil is the CEO of IIT KDF. These are some numbers which we have seen in the past five years. Even during COVID, we were able to generate uh, a substantial uh, amount of funds. Uh, not to forget that uh, during COVID period, we were completely going online. So there was a MOOC platform which we imbibed to reach out to the students who were far away struck uh, in different places. Apart from that, because of generous donation from the alumni, we were able to provide maybe uh, like internet uh, accessories in terms of dongle, in terms of laptops to some of the underprivileged students who were in the remote areas, and they were able to download uh, both uh, the, uh, the package if they were available online, they could attend the classes, or we were able to post the material in USB and reach out to these students. So that way, I think at every level, student level, staff level, and faculty level, we made very, very sincere and out of the box and I think uh, this was a call of duty for all of us, and we were able to make sure that nobody is losing out in terms of uh, the educational aspects for those two years. Of course, several rules were relaxed in terms of grading and in terms of not failing any student because of such activities. But the uh, sheer, I think, willingness and the intent of all the community to make it happen was, a, I think, like a really commendable. So let's thank uh, for them. Yeah. Uh, there have been major individual donors in the past, and uh, they will be at, uh, on the wall of fame somewhere, I think in the medical school or some other places. Uh, there have been several uh, reunions, and I think your picture will also come in uh, the next slide, I think, <laughs> whenever the uh, next presentation is being made. And uh, there have been several uh, alumni meet outside the country, which have been very successful. Uh, I'll talk for a few minutes on Gangwal School of Medical Science and Technology. This has been uh, one of our ambitious projects as far as institute is concerned because we are known for technology, but we are venturing and uh, going into the un these chartered, uncharted kind of areas where medical science um, is being explored. And those of you who are familiar with Kanpur will appreciate the need for such a school. But in addition, like uh, having a medical school in a well-known um, like, uh, technological institute has its own set of advantages. Those who have seen such kind of marriages abroad and other places will appreciate that this has a very, very um, like quantum kind of uh, effect as far as research and future aspects are concerned. So we are taking uh, some baby steps, but uh, we have been fortunate to raise enough funding to come up with the first phase of the uh, school. Uh, there will be several such uh, facilities or specialities, but it will be at a higher level. So at the PG level, uh, such super speciality aspects will be there. It is called Yadupati Singhania based on the generous support of uh, JK Group. And then we have Gangwal School of Medical Science, again, uh, because of the uh, Rakesh Gangwal, who has generously supported uh, the uh, aspects of coming up with this building and other aspects uh, in terms of research equipment. So yes, from the top bird's eye view, it looks still looks very green, but yes, once the medical school come, some part of the green patch, which was a reserve area, will be taken away, but for very, very humanistic cause, okay? Because this, hotel, uh, this host hospital will cater not only to the community within, but to a larger community of I Kanpur city as such. So. It will be a very, uh, I'm like, uh, interesting and very important uh, facility that we'll have. Uh, initial donors, Muktesh Pant, uh, Mr. Anil Bansal, Mr. Heman Jalan, uh, Dr. Dev Joneja, uh, Deepak Narula, and of course, uh, Rakesh Gangwal. They have been, uh, I'm like, the pillars. They have 
actually believed in the vision that we had developed for this school and now we are going to start and already Bhumi Pujan has happened. So uh, some of the interesting projects, uh, one is Hedayantra. I don't know if they will be visiting the lab for this. Probably, yeah. So this is left assistive uh, ventilation, uh, ventilator, left ventricle assistive device. So basically those patients whose ventricle muscles are uh, going away and they are bound to get a heart attack, this device which is developed fully in IIT Kanpur and now we are going for animal trial soon. We already got a clearance for that. Uh, it's going to be a game changer because uh, both in terms of the fraction of the actual cost, it will be available to a larger public. And uh, of course, uh, it's uh, homegrown technology, so we are proud of that. Uh, there are certain uh, people who have already put their name in the Hall of Fame in terms of donors. Uh, we will invite more of you to come and see your names on this list. It's not just, uh, I'm like, in terms of visibility, but uh, giving for a very, very novel cause and something which is going to be shaping up very soon in IIT Kanpur. Uh, we al already have one building ready for uh, resident doctors who will be coming for this school. And um, of course, uh, the Bhumi Pujan just had happened in, on 25th September for this school and the construction will start soon by LNT. <coughs> so in terms of future roadmap, uh, we want to get to this number of 650 faculty members and about 10,000 students by 2025. Currently we have 576 uh, faculty members and about 9,000 students. And we want to augment the number of PhD scholars and postdocs because they will be like workhorses in terms of research and development within the institute. Uh, we want to uh, do the, uh, I'm like, uh, commissioning of several buildings which are about to be completed. Of course, Gangwal School of Medical Technology. And then to be comfortable, we need to have another set of buildings. So we have recently applied for Hefalon. So Hefalon is something which is being given by the government with, uh, it's a loan for 10 years. And with the condition that uh, they will take care of the uh, interest on it but every year 10% of that loan has to be repaid upfront. So if we are like, currently we have taken about 600 crores loan, so every year about 60 crores goes to repay that. So five years have gone, so we have already repaid, but that money has to be generated by the institute. It's not something will come as a aid in grant from the government. So we have to be active, we have to reach out to people both um, in industry and several funding agencies uh, come up with CSR activities so that we can raise funds. And of course, with the generous donation of alumni and hand holding with them, we have to come up with these numbers because it's a more about surviving in the um, difficult conditions. And uh, it will become, I think, more and more this because uh, now 23 IITs are there, several NITs are there. Government has limited funding and limited intention to fund us. So we have to generate our own funds. Uh, I'll, I have already said what uh, all these challenges are. So both in terms of infrastructure, student and faculty, there are several initiative and maybe like projects with which Kapil can uh, maybe enlighten you more and maybe give a tour of some of the things which have been uh, developed uh, with the generous support. Ranking is something on our radar, but then we don't want to go crazy with ranking because these are numbers. If we are doing well, if we, we are striving for excellence, we will reach there. But we should not be uh, like taking shortcuts and crunching numbers just to get the ranking. So we are not too much bogged down by those numbers. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Yes. I think it would be in the fitness if you elaborate a little bit on that. Besides, Kapil would certainly be speaking about it. Right. So uh, uh, the basic issue is that how much is it coming as a grant from the government? How much are you able to raise? And what are the plans and how do you plan that you would be meeting up all these uh, whatever you have plans? And certainly, if you want to go even further, then how institute uh, expects it 
to be meeting the requirements. Thank you for your question. So uh, let me give you some broad numbers. So from the government, we are getting, uh, like in last financial year, 650 crores, okay? And out of which uh, about 300 crores goes straight to salary expenses. About 150 crores goes for uh, meeting out the needs of pension and fellowship for the students, right? We have uh, like PG students who get fellowship. And apart from that, we have yearly utility bills of electric electricity itself of 50, 60 crores. Then another 20 crores goes for maintenance of the uh, buildings. So we are roughly left with our recurring grant for um, like lab management of different uh, departments and about 50 to 60 crore for capital grant. That means if you want to buy uh, some instrument or you want to upgrade a new building or maybe a say a table, table tennis room for a hostel or something like that. So that is only 60 crore. It's minuscule for a institute of this capacity. So what in addition we are spending 100 crores our internal raise fund, 60 crores goes straight for HEFA loan repayment and 40 crores for our day-to-day -day expenses. So uh, that includes support for students uh, traveling abroad for conferences, uh, maybe some uh, conference organization by different uh, faculty members and such kind of activities where like obviously they cannot raise the 100% funding. So part of it comes from the uh, institute and again, like within the institute, there are various uh, ways in which those are done. So recently, as I showed you some alumni numbers, I think uh, if we were not raising this alumni funds, we would have been in quite a bit of soup. So you can see that uh, since financial year 2017-18, we were in double digits. Only recently we have gone in triple digits, largely because of medical school but also for augmenting our day-to-day -day expenses. So yes, uh, I would say we are not in very tight, tight situation. We are doing well, but it's, uh, we are hand to mouth in some ways. So if we have to strive for something much better, we have to raise our quantum of, uh, I can also being a Dean of Research and Development, I can also tell that before COVID, the total corpus that money we were raising, both in terms of sponsored and uh, industrial grant from uh, various projects. Of that pie, about 18 to 19% was industrial money. After COVID, in the last financial year, in, in the current financial year, that uh, pie which, which is coming from industry funds is grown to 31 to 32%. We would ideally like to take it to 50, 60% so that we have less strings attached and we have more money raised from industry and uh, such aspects which are not controlled strictly by governmental rules and very regiment and because there's a huge time delay also in which the funds are actually released. Sometimes we get funds just before the financial year ending. The moment it's released, within 15 days it goes back to the uh, government and then you have to write a lot of papers and emails to get it back for meaningful work. And so a lot of this important time of faculty members and students is lost. That's why we are striving and uh, reaching out to industry and CSR so that uh, we can get something uh, of obviously compared to government, industry will have very strict deadlines, but it helps. So I hope I have answered your question. Uh, maybe first. Uh. I'll come back to you. Oh, sorry. These are individual donors, but uh, batch-wise, you will have separate. Yes. Yes. One query and one query and one suggestion. Hmm. And the query is that are you doing any work on fuel cells as well for renewable energy? Okay. And the suggestion is that uh, uh, have you explored the option of open access for reducing your electricity bill? Because you must be paying six rupees, seven rupees per unit. We Whereas are. in open access, you can easily get at four rupees to five rupees. We are so paying eight rupees. So as a uh, you must be aware that the government of India allows uh, open access for load more than 100 kilowatt. So definitely you have a much bigger uh, this thing. So if you can have some PPA with some uh, solar power producer, 
under open access system, you can bring down your cost from eight rupees to four rupees. Four okay. rupees, four rupees. Depends. I think that's you a good suggestion. That. Hmm. That's a good suggestion. I'll have to discuss with uh, DIP uh, because just, uh, they uh, are uh, more try to work it out. There are people who are providing it on a uh, 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 cumulative basis also. There are certain companies which are doing also, who yeah. are just arranging, doing the matchmaking between the power generators and the users. I think you must a, explore that. That's a very good suggestion. But come, uh, answering uh, your first question about fuel cell, I, probably I didn't uh, point it out. We have a, a large area which is a solar park within the campus. And several buildings, if you go uh, in the type four and also some high rise building uh, in faculty apartments, they have solar rooftops. Several hostels have solar geysers. So we are definitely into it. In terms of research, uh, uh, we have material science department and Department of Sustainable Energy and Engineering, which is focusing on fuel cell, uh, both in terms of organic fuel cells and other uh, aspects like silicon-based uh, fuel cells. So yes, a lot of research is actually going on on that aspect. Yeah. Uh, you had a question. Yeah, one question is, what is the reserve fund? Uh, reserve, fund. reserve funds, uh, I'm not very sure about it because um, it will be uh, in triple digits only, like very, uh, less i'm like I, if you are talking about in terms of fds and things like that so we have hostel fund we have some investment committee i think kapil can say more i am not aware i can only tell about r and d so we have as of now uh, yesterday 63 crores as a reserve fund nothing more than that very few. and how much is the solar power Anyone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you are looking for all uh, alumni, uh, I mean, contribution very fine. I mean, uh, I would like to know about, uh, like, since one of the things which we alumni, we look forward to any of these inventions, which, you know, are like, you know, they are reported by the media and we feel very proud, we feel very happy. So in that respect, I wanted to know what is the system or the do you have any SOP of <coughs> bringing these uh, inventions or these you know, components which are uh, to the industry or to the commercialization? I have interacted with your predecessor also, Bimal Chopra. I have sent you some mails also. I have interacted with some of the faculty also. I have seen some of these uh, inventions, some of these devices which could be, do you have an SOP? Do you have a, a proper system of bringing them to light or to this market? Yes, so we have as part of uh, Dean of Research and Development uh, Department or section, we have SIIC and within SIIC there is a team of four people. Apart from that, uh, we have five faculty members who are mentored to that and we have TT Mac meetings almost every month. The scheme is they scout for technologies which are at TRL level four or five of course, uh, we encourage students and faculty members to file patents. So this is almost on autopilot in terms of patents. So this year we have reached 151. And uh, probably soon we will be reaching annual patent filing of 200, out of which I already said 14% is commercialized, that is licensed. Our licensing uh, revenue in last several years have gone to crores level. Okay, so Loras Lab, we, we did uh, four crore, just one technology. Recently, Sensokia, we did for 35 lakh, and so on. But uh, several students and several faculty members are shying because they, were, they are in a hurry to publish things, and they do not wait for patenting to be happening. So that awareness and reaching out is being done at the departmental level. So uh, in terms of what is the uh, mechanism, uh, we reach out to people, we, we have been scouting uh, in different forums, like could be trade fair, recently we will be going to Pan IIT uh, in Bangalore. Uh, there's an inventive event which is going to happen in IIT Hyderabad in uh, January 1920. And the, the thing is like if I am a faculty member and I have done something with my students, I have a technology, and if I am licensing with a company, uh, there is an interface of several faculty members who are chosen based on their expertise in terms of tech technical aspect, in terms of their financial acumen, and they negotiate. And they 
come up with a technology pricing based on the efforts and the uh, time which has gone both from institute and students on that technology. Its transfer happens in exclusive or non-exclusive basis, on royalty basis, one time or uh, recurring money which is being uh, promised uh, and we sign an MOU and there's a technology transfer which happens. So I hope I have answered your question. Citation index uh, of individual or faculty member? <laughs> yes, so uh, I don't have that data right on my mind, but if you go to IIT Kanpur website. Yeah, yeah, so I'm telling you where you can get the data. You go to IRINA's website, you will get the complete data of department wise. But if you want to check any individual faculty member, you can always go on Scopus or Google Scholar. Of course it's an uptrend because we have number of faculty members increasing, number of students, uh, PhDs, we have touched 251 in the last convocation and now it is a mandate that you have to publish in high profile journals. Of course, uh, I'm like you have to uh, weed out the, the ones which are paid and like kind of predatory journals. So I think faculty members have their duty and it's like publish or perish kind of philosophy. Yes, uh, the impact is going very high. So, we have uh, published in papers uh, as big as Lancet, which has an impact factor of 110. And uh, recently, several uh, people have published in Nature, Science, uh, Proceeding of National Academy of Sciences, Cell. <laughs> so these are like uh, very high profile journals in which we have been publishing, Geophysical uh, Union, and so on. Do you have incentive for publication? Incentive? Uh, Uh, no, we don't, we don't, uh, we had a scheme for students long time back where like each student, if you publish, you get 10,000 rupees if you are first author and maximum 20,000 you can uh, get as an award. But individual departments may have such scheme, but at the institute level, we do not have that scheme anymore. Yeah, that is again like uh, if we get alumni uh, donorship for such I think it will be a wonderful thing to have, especially for so, supporting their uh, international conference visit. I think there we feel the crunch. So definitely if you can come forward, that will be a great uh, initiative. So uh, I have one question. So you have IITK Lauras Lab collaboration on gene therapy. And so you're doing some uh, gene therapy work for uh, hereditary so I, I would like to know some more information on muscular dystrophy, what is happening, and uh, if so, where else can I get some more detailed information? Yeah, so uh, Associate Dean for Research and Development, Professor Jenendra G. Rao, he's the one uh, who is involved in this. And uh, I'll request Kapil if you can make a lab visit for and discuss in more details. So both in terms of muscular uh, uh, dystrophy and then I think uh, some eye disease that uh, he has, hemophilia. Uh, so he has developed molecular level uh, solution for that, but making it to the drug level and doing uh, first trials on animals and then on human population. We are far from that, but uh, Loris Lab has committed several funds and they are going to come up with a GMP facility within the campus in Technopark. So we are in the right direction. I have a question for you. So thank you for the wonderful presentation. There was a lot of good news there. Uh, very impressive achievement in the last five years. Uh, my concern is that this news is not getting out. And we are not in a major metro being in Kanpur. And most people, if they heard of Kanpur, they hear of it in a negative light. Right. And one of the ways to counteract that is to have a very good website. If you look at our website, it, is, it looks at least 20 years out of date in terms of its basic design. I'm not talking about the content. If we could fix that and if a student passes the JE and they go to the website to choose between the various IITs, and we had the best website, the most appealing one with some of these achievements that you have outlined, I think it would make a significant difference in our perception. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you. So we, we acknowledge that and we know uh, our website is not up to the standards. I 
won't use the word I use for it otherwise. In this forum, uh, we had rebranded the website. The, 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 the new website is, is ready and uh, it should get launched very soon. Uh, we're essentially waiting for the new director to come over and just click the button. So we've, we've, we've done that. We know it's been a, a pain for us. Too. But I uh, just want to add to it. So since uh, before taking this position, I was head of the Department of Civil Engineering. So several departments at individual level, they have upgraded their uh, departmental website. So I would request you to visit uh, Department of Economics, de IME Department, and Civil Engineering. They have brand new websites. So. I think uh, that may give you some respite. I know the pain point and the frustration. Uh, we also feel the, feel the same. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, sir, we are happy to know that the, uh, the, the institute is a diverse, diversified so many things. But I would like to know uh, about the future. Uh, any project uh, are we taking on green hydrogen production? or its cost effectiveness, for example, the reduction of the electrolyzer cost? Uh, in terms of technical aspect, I won't be able to say exactly who is doing what, but yes, green hydrogen is something that uh, several people are working. And uh, you may want to talk to some professors like uh, K.S. Nalwa and uh, maybe Malay Chaudhary uh, and few others, I think, like uh, we can find out from our office like who are working exactly on those domains. But yes, it's at an, uh, the research is at nascent stage uh, as far as hydrogen aspect. I know uh, Professor Avinash Agarwal uh, have worked with uh, hydrogen and methane combination for running uh, automotive <coughs> engines. And uh, because uh, experimenting itself is uh, becomes very uh, expensive because you have to install several sensors within the facility. So if you get a chance, please do visit uh, Engine uh, Research Lab you will be amazed to see the facilities and the kind of work which is done. And also there are a bunch of faculty members who are working on creating robot uh, electrolyzers. So it's again, the whole idea around hydrogen mm -hmm. is that there are faculty members, some are working on production the and some are working on catalyst access. Sir, I have a question for uh, civil engineering department. Like we have got all these codes. Our codes are very primitive type. Suppose I want to go for a continuous bridge structure, infrastructure. There is no code available. We have to refer to UIC code or uh, British code or American code. So my suggestion is, why not we update our codes, IIT being a, a premium institute. So you must be there in uh, the committee of upgradation of these codes. I think this is a good suggestion. I think uh, Professor Sudhir Mishra is not here, uh, but he is the domain expert, so I'll pass on this uh, message to him. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, maybe the last question. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a fundamental, I have a fundamental question. <laughs> Excellent presentation. IITK is doing extremely well. We are very proud, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, fundamental question is that the institute was created to create a positive impact to India, right? And, and I think we have done that collectively between the IITs and, and the alumni's. I think India is on the right track, right? From the point we were earlier in like 40, 50 years back, now we have a highest GDP in the world today, right? And highest population, of course, right? So, but the, how do you, I mean, I saw your 25% uh, construction, 75% green, beautiful campus, we love, I would love to go for a walk here, right? How do we translate that portion of the success to the rest of India, and by, because India is the largest population to the rest of the world? Because I think that's what is missing today, right? If you think about it, right? You are on a high GDP growth, things are happening, all these new innovations are coming. But if you walk around, you still have lots of difficult times, people are in poverty or different, how do you, sort of take this experiment of IIT Kanpur and translate that, I think, to India. And I'm, I know nobody has the answers. I think we have to think it collectively. See, I, well, I, it's a big picture question, I, right? So, my thank take you. on this is like being a teacher, we can only educate. And I'm like, in terms of educating, we, uh, I'm like, whatever we learn as the best practices, 
either from here or like uh, studying abroad, we can only cater to that aspect. So that is our job. We are doing value addition to the students who are coming here and who are going out. Through e-masters program and the work outreach program that uh, Rosi Rozgar Siksha Kendra is doing, we are trying to reach out to the strata where uh, we can maybe like uh, do minuscule amount, but then still like substantial in terms of changing the life of uh, several people. So we are into education business, we can only educate. And that is how we can spread uh, this awareness. Yeah. Implementation I, has to be done at the... No, I agree, along with the alumni, along with the alumni, I think the next leg up would be to see how we can change right, right further. Thank you. Maybe last question. Yeah. Better now? I have to switch on. So thank you so much for the excellent presentation. And uh, it was really quite amazing to see the achievements over the last, I guess, 40 years uh, since we've been on campus. And uh, I second uh, Shivin's thoughts that, honestly, I didn't know about all of these remarkable things that you were doing on campus. And of course, the website is a great idea. Um, the one thing that I'd like to add is yesterday we had an introductory session where all our batch, I mean the batch members present over here, talked about the work they had done, the skill sets they had built, the experience that they have. So in addition to raising money, I think what you have is an amazing knowledge base in the alumni. And I don't know that we uh, have any structured programs to leverage that. And again, going back to Shivendra, he's done a remarkable job with uh, with. Uh, putting together this uh, this program of the joint PhD, but it doesn't just have to be academic and to create impact that Anup talks about. I think that you could leverage your, uh, your alumni and we're all on the verge of retirement. We're all looking for constructive things to do and to make an impact and to contribute back to our alma mater, of course. So that's one thing perhaps we should discuss and, and Kapil to you, maybe we have an open session where there's just so many people who would like to help right, that we could uh, we could at least build a base of uh, knowledge and experts and so on that you can you can leverage. I and think that Anil is also doing a great job here where he's teaching practice. There's uh, so many others who'd like to. I think excellent point. That. Maybe I missed in my presentation. This is uh, a very important aspect of alumni engagement. So you can be mentor to our students if you can spend some time as visiting faculty. That is wonderful. We have the, uh, such provisions in our statutes and then uh, we have made norms in terms of hiring of faculty members, <laughs> visiting faculty. So you don't need to have completed PhD to be a adjunct professor or visiting uh, for a short time. I think, right. And then several of, of alumni and those who have spent time in either uh, like government agencies or industries have come back and are actively engaged as professor of practice. Apart from that, we can also engage you in uh, several short-term courses or uh, various kind of uh, conferences that we have. And on voluntary basis, I, I don't think anyone will say no if you would like to come. We will be very happy to host you. And I think like there's uh, so much experience that you can share with the fellow students. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. You, you have a very fair point. Uh, the important thing is, yes, we all know that alumni want to engage and institute also wants to engage, but is there a pathway? And which is essentially our responsibility to create pathways for alumni to come back and connect back with us. So in the DORA website, so, so fundamentally most of us on most occasions keep, especially me, keep asking for money. So we said, let's move aside from money. More importantly, people want to give back their time, which is far more valuable. How can they give back their time? So we've created that opportunity, that pathway through the DORA website, where people can tell us very, 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 very clearly that how can they contribute. We've laid a whole path there, whether you want to be come on board uh, to teach 
or in advisory positions or as a mentor, whether you would, you would want to mentor uh, students or you would want to mentor startups, if you want to make an angel investments into our startup. So, so that is very clearly, so, so we're building that out that should be ready in the next few days. So these are critical things. And, and then the next important thing for us would be one is not just building it out, making it visible. So that has been a bigger challenge for us. That's something that uh, we've not done very well with. We've not been uh, particularly great with our communication with the world outside, whether it's alumni industry. So that is something that we have to fix. And we're in the process of fixing that. We're on our way and we will on this journey also seek your inputs. How can we do it better? We, we're not masters of everything. This is a process and we will certainly seek your inputs as we move along. Thank you. Yep, yep. Absolutely. So, so uh, one of the things that we very clearly struggle with is uh, database in terms of how much do we know our people. I keep telling them that we have uh, the rows in terms of we know the names of people and what year did they graduate and their roll number. But do we know beyond that what they've done in their lives and how we can leverage that. So that's something uh, that is my pet project and I keep uh, harassing my team on this, that no, we need to fix this. This is an important thing for us. Because only when we know people will we be able to engage with them far more effectively. So that is something that we're working on. Yes. Absolutely. Precisely. Precisely. It's not a huge data also. Certainly, certainly. Absolutely, 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 yes. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think we will move on with the program, right? Thank you. Thank you. Couple, couple there's a small suggestion here. I've been in your role at IIM Ahmedabad and ISP Hyderabad. Yep. And... Uh, one of the things that's really worked is the batch champions. Yes. So go for the, you know, generous people like Anjali who could handle the U.S. And, and here in Delhi chapter at IID Kanpur, we had Narendra Diwana. You know, go with some of the batch champions. They are the game changers in this yep. whole thing. So do that and does wonders. Certainly, certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving such an insightful overview of the Institute and one to audience for the wonderful question answer se session. Now, I would look to, like to request from Mr. Kapil Kaul, CEO, ITK Development Foundation, to kindly address the gathering. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so thank you very much for being here with us uh, today. Uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, this is essentially the presentation which was to be made by Professor Kantesh Balani, Dean of Resources and Alumni. Uh, in this presentation, we'll largely talk about our uh, alumni engagement initiatives and uh, the, the fundraising initiatives that we've been running through our office. So this is 
the laurels of IIT Kanpur, we spoke about it uh, in the director's presentation as well. When we were, we're the first in innovation, fourth in engineering, and uh, fifth in the overall list of universities as per the NIRF ranking. Uh, uh, we'd want to thank your batch for its contributions over the years where you've supported students through scholarships. Uh, there are merit awards, there are community welfare projects where you've contributed towards the Campus Workers Fund, uh, COVID-19 Relief Fund, and the Opportunity School. And uh, there are several other memorial funds, Enable Online Education Program, Infrastructure Funds, uh, the WISE Program that uh, Anjali has uh, helped us um, incubate, and several chairs. Uh, we have several distinguished alumnus from your batch. You should be proud of them. With the seven of them, with uh, Vivek Sarkar, Anjali, Anjali's here, Dr. Dinesh Kumar Jain, uh, uh, Professor Shivendra Singh, he's here, Neera Tandon, uh, Professor Jainendra Jain, and Professor A.K. Ghosh. So, so congratulations to all of you. Uh, I'm sharing with you a bunch of new developments that have happened in the Institute in the last few years, which is uh, uh, helping us move further. The first one is uh, the we have a med tech facility on campus where we're looking very clearly at uh, uh, moving uh, up in the whole medical device ecosystem value chain. So, so this facility gives the access to students and faculty members to work on their projects and come up with uh, products and devices that can go into the market. Uh, the next uh, big one uh, is the Gangwal School of Medical Sciences and Technology that Tarun already spoke about, wherein uh, we, are, we want to bring about a paradigm shift uh, because we believe that m a reasonable uh, majority of interventions in medical sciences going forward will be technology driven and none of the inst medical institutions in India are equipped or uh, in a condition to do this, but we believe as a technology institution, we are uh, very well poised to do this, and uh, we see this the setting up of Gangwal School of Medical Sciences and Technology as a st step in this direction, which will help us achieve this goal. Uh, We've also set up uh, Shivani Center for Nurture and Reintegration of Hindi and other Indian languages. This was a center set up by our alumnus, our distinguished alumnus, Mr. Muktesh Pant, in the memory of his mother, uh, late Shivani, who was a famous Hindi writer. And uh, uh, this center works with students who come from vernacular uh, backgrounds and helps them uh, adapt to the, 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 the social and cultural milieu of IIT Kanpur, gives them a soft landing. Uh, we have the Mehta Family Center for Engineering in Medicine, which Tarun also spoke about, which, which works, again, bringing in technology in uh, certain aspects of medicine. We have the Ranjit Singh Roji Shiksha Kendra, which works with communities uh, around IIT Kanpur, help them become uh, with their livelihood needs and also promote entrepreneurship among uh, women. And what we've recently done is we've set up Kotak School of Sustainability, which uh, uh, is essentially our idea of setting up a school of sustainability. And uh, uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank has uh, liked our concept, the way we were looking at the whole idea of School of Sustainability, and they have funded it with a grant of 120 crores. Uh, some of the alumni engagement initiatives, as we were just talking about it, is uh, uh, to begin with, we have the IIT Converge. Uh, one of the things that we realized in the last few years that uh, as we spoke to our donors who'd contributed in the past, that. Uh, there hasn't been enough engagement from the institute. They just gave the money and uh, then we simply forgot what's happening to that money. But we're trying to re-establish, connect with our donors, wherein we connect the beneficiary with the donors. So if somebody's established a chair or a fellowship or a scholarship, we try and connect them back through with uh, 
with the beneficiaries of their contribution, whether it is a student or a faculty, through a one-on-one -on -one interactions. Uh, when people are on campus, this is done in person. And uh, on many occasions, on most occasions, this is typically done online. We're trying to reach out to as many donors as possible. At this point of time, there's typically three to four donors that we try and meet every month. But uh, that simply is not enough. We're looking at uh, ramping this ap activity up further. Uh, we also did an orientation with the batch of 2023 this year where we uh, introduced them the, to the concept of alumni, how alumni have been giving back, how alumni make a difference to the lives of these students through various initiatives uh, on most occasions because they don't know uh, 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 what benefits uh, they are getting because of alumni contributions. Uh, our hope also is that one, they would be alumni in four years, five years. When they go out, they also continue the tradition of giving back. Uh, uh, we're also running an alumni mentorship program. Uh, this was take, started with the class of 1977. And uh, our intent is to connect students with alumni who can provide them with mentorship, which is, uh, and advice, whether it is related to their career choices, or uh, the startups that they want to do, and generally life experience, which I believe is very, very powerful. At this point of time, 70 students and 40 alumni are engaged through this program. Uh, we're also running Alma Connect, which is a new platform that uh, we've started where alumni will connect with students on a regular basis, virtually or in person, on both personal and professional interests. So, so what we try and do is uh, bring alumni and students together uh, where an alumni is able to share uh, either their professional experience or personal experience, whatever they've learned in their life and through their journey, and share that with students. Because uh, the real smart people learn from experiences of others, not just their own experiences. And I believe our students are very smart. So, so we've done six events so far, and we've managed to connect 460 students with alumni through these events. Uh, another thing which I would want to talk about also from our donor standpoint is uh, we've started a project management portal. <clears throat> Essentially, all our donors can now access the contributions that they've made to the institute. They would be able to see uh, who are the people who've contributed, how much have they contributed, how much have who, how much have they contributed in person, who are the beneficiaries. Uh, the, the financial reports of uh, uh, what is uh, the endowment size, what is uh, got consumed, what is the current balance, and uh, the reports from the beneficiaries that programmatically, what impact has it created uh, in the institute. Uh, our current challenges uh, is, uh, Tarun spoke about uh, uh, our payment obligations towards HEPA as uh, the government does not give us any capital grants anymore. Uh, what for any capital asset development, we have to take a loan and repay over a period of 10 years. And this money essentially comes out of our internal incomes, which is a combination of the fees that we charge the students, uh, the overheads on R&D, and uh, the interest on our corpuses. Uh, at this point of time, our internal incomes are around 110 crores. And uh, we are already paying around 60, 60, lakh, 60 crores as uh, the, the debt that we are serving on and servicing on an annual basis, so which is like almost 60% of our internal incomes are going towards uh, paying the debt for capital asset development. Uh, our revenues are limited because uh, uh, the students who pay, uh, only 50% of our students today are undergraduate students who pay the fee with post grad, grad uh, with grad students and PhD scholars. Uh, they don't usually pay a fees. Uh, undergrad also, there's a limited number of students who, who pay the full fee. So our revenue generation capacity from that element, from the education part, is very limited. We've been lobbying with the government that we should be allowed to charge the full fees. And uh, uh, the, the government can pass on the uh, the, 
the subsidy that they are giving through a direct benefit transfer to the beneficiaries, but that has not uh, really cut ice yet. Uh, our funding requirement, we're essentially looking at generating 100 to 125 crores every year to meet our growth needs. Uh, the government aid has uh, come down considerably, but at this point of time, it is still 75% of our institutional budget. Uh, I spoke about the financial support on CapEx and uh, the institutional liabilities on... Sorry. Uh, th this is a snapshot of uh, the funding opportunities that are available. Uh, primarily focuses, uh, one of our greatest funding needs is on the infrastructure side uh, where we are building the, the medical school uh, for several new centers. Housing for students is is an important focus area for us because uh, we've not been doing very well there. Uh, the student population has shot up by almost 30% uh, uh, or more in the last four or five years. Uh, and with no capital funding support, we need to build housing for them and we've, we've, we've lagged at that. So we are catching up, but, uh, but there's more that we can do there. Uh, we run several community welfare initiatives. As I spoke with them, there is a, uh, opportunity school within uh, the campus, uh, which uh, is taking care of the educational needs of students who come from the nearby communities, Nankari and other Vibara Sarojini, other villages. Uh, the whole R&D and innovation ecosystem, uh, uh, where we focus on research, student entrepreneurship programs. One of the things that we we see that how do we bring about change? is the question that you were asking is the students that we were, we are, we are sending out of this place, they're the real change makers. And what do they choose to do in the world outside will make the difference. So if we're able to uh, motivate them and guide them to become successful entrepreneurs who are producing technologies that can really be game changing, uh, do their own startups, employ people, uh, that will make a huge difference to the country. Uh, so, so that is one thing. So student entrepreneurship is something that uh, we are working towards. Then uh, for students, there are scholarships, awards, travel grants. We want to give them the best exposure, attend the best conferences, publish in the right places, and then pursue further research. Uh, there is a Sahyog program which is focused on students who come from uh, 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 really uh, economically weaker sections who may even have a challenge to come to the campus, pay the registration fees, stay here for three days, who may not even have funds for that. So, so we've created a program for supporting them. Uh, another important thing uh, where we want to support work with students in development and career guidance initiatives, that uh, we, our students are really good when it comes to their fundamentals on uh, engineering, science, technology. However, how, when they go in the real world, when people are hiring, how do we give them that cutting edge? How, are, how do they become better than the others? So, because ev every company that comes here will go to IIT Bombay, Delhi, Madras, everywhere in all probability. How do we equip them that they would say, oh, IIT Kanpur students are far better. And so, so, so the benchmark, the way we've been looking at it is they would typically say it takes us around 12 to 18 months to train a resource that we hire from your institutions. And what we're trying to understand here is what do you do with them that we can possibly try and do it here so that an IIT Kanpur student, when they go and get employed in the industry, is ready to deliver in, in maybe six months. So they're able to cut down on the six months that they're investing from their end. So then we become uh, the, the go-to place. So they would obviously want prefer our product, if I have to put it across that way. So, so, so that is, is one more thing. Faculty is, is again, the, the other stakeholder that makes this institution. So, uh, so we, we have the chair professorships, which are the endowed chair professorships for faculty members who really excelled and achieved excellence in their domain. Uh, young faculty fellowships for faculty members who are mid-career, typically below the age of 40, uh, new faculty uh, recruitment, we have to attract young and bright faculty to this institute, uh, research initiation grants for them, and distinguished lecture series. Uh, 
these are some of the inf infrastructure initiatives that have been supported by batches over the years. These range right from the PBCC where you met last evening to the Park 67, squash courts, uh, aerobic hall, the, the waterfront uh, outside the library, the outreach building that we're sitting in, uh, the gym upgradation is happening right now, and there are faculty lounges uh, which was supported by class of 1968. Gangwal School, we spoke, is possibly the most ambitious project in the history of IIT Kanpur because it, it involves setting up a full-fledged super speciality hospital. So, so in terms of its size, it's not 600, it's 700 crores. It's spread over 30 acres. It will have a 500 bed super speciality hospital and uh, with centers of excellence, which will bring together the clinical faculty from the hospital to work together with faculty members from core uh, engineering and science departments of IIT Kanpur to work on um, innovations and uh, projects where we can uh, make some serious change. Uh, several funding opportunities are available uh, within the super speciality hospital. Uh, there's some clinical departments that are available. Uh, there's the academic and research wing, uh, which has been funded by uh, IBM. Uh, the housing block has been funded by, for resident doctor has been funded by REC. Uh, the centers of excellence, their naming opportunities are very, because the whole project is being funded through philanthropic contributions from alumni and uh, CSR contributions from uh, the corporates. Uh, this is again, uh, so we have a, a, a founder donor program for this school. We have the four uh, uh, circle of founder, founder circle. All the, those have been taken. We have still looking for more, peop, more funding Then people can come on board. All of you are welcome to be on board as principal founders, co-founders and founding patrons. Uh, on the student side, I spoke about student housing is a big concern for us and we're looking for building uh, additional capacity of at least uh, 3,000, or the actual number is 3,700 odd rooms, bare minimum we need. And if we look at it futuristically, then we're looking at adding additional capacity of 5,000. Uh, we're building 745 rooms currently uh, in Hostel 14 and 15 construction will start soon. So this uh, is something that we need support on. Uh, then we have scholarships, awards and other things that I spoke about. Uh, faculty initiatives, I spoke about the Young Faculty Fellowship, the New Faculty Fellowship and the endowed chairs. Uh, these are some of the new initiatives. I spoke about uh, their new departments within the institute that are looking at support in the form of by setting up new labs and attracting high quality talent. Uh, so that is there. There are several centers uh, that are looking at funding support from time to time. Right now, there are a few new centers that are uh, in the pipeline. Uh, a lot of you are at uh, uh, decision making positions in corporates and uh, uh, we, we raise a fair amount of resources through CSR funds and we would be happy to engage with you to uh, leverage your organization's CSR funds to support uh, initiatives at IIT Kanpur. Uh, this is about tax benefits. All contributions are uh, tax exempt in India and in US, in India under Section ATG, and uh, in US through IIT Kanpur Foundation, which is a 501c3 listed there. And uh, so that's there. Uh, and I can't ignore the team which is there. So Professor Kantesh Balani is. No, if we get 100%. In our case, it's 100% and there is no limit. Typically in under ATG, uh, there is a limit of the maximum uh, deduction you can avail is 10% of your gross taxable income. However, because IITs are institutions of national importance. In our case, there is no limitation. Uh, this is the team, so we're led by Professor Kantesh Balani, who's the Dean of Resources and Alumni. And uh, the list, the people that you, the faces that you see there, they, they're all staff from uh, 
the DORA office, which is uh, Office of Resources and Alumni. And uh, we are essentially the extended arm of DORA, uh, which is IIT Kanpur Development Foundation. So I am the CEO of the foundation, and uh, I have with me Vanish Talreja, who's the Vice President for Operations and Alumni Relations, and uh, Rajat Sharma, who's the Vice President for uh, Development. And uh, then we, we have a large team now. I won't get into naming everyone. All of you would know Sakshi and Ankita because they manage alumni relations, so they will be working very closely with you. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you very much. Uh, I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. So. Absolutely. Important as correct. It should be. I completely agree with you that uh, this is something that we need to focus on as uh, our students go out. Uh, if their EQ is stronger, they will perform better in the longer run than then. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So, uh, so, so till last year, the fees was uh, two lakhs per annum, the tuition, uh, which is now from this year for the incoming batch of 2023, the fees is 2.35 lakhs per annum, which is around 1.17 uh, lakhs per semester. This is pure tuition. Then obviously the hostel and the mess. Uh, typically, uh, this is the fees that we charge. But if we say uh, this is highly subsidized, the unsubsidized cost per student would be a little over 10 lakhs per annum. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yes, 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 very much, very much. So, so one of the things that we, we very clearly are uh, working uh, on is, and, and, and you, somebody had asked a question earlier on funding, that uh, w w how does the funding stack up? Uh, we, uh, we are doing just about okay, as Tarun spoke about, but if we really need uh, to, if we're really looking at achieving our goals, our long-term goals, then there is a need for us to build uh, a reasonably strong endowment. And uh, we uh, today our the the endowment is around 600 odd crores. Our intent is uh, that we should have at least a 500 million dollar endowment in the next 10 years or so. So that is what we are targeting. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very new thing. Endowments are a new concept in India. It's still not taken off. So a lot of work will have to be done. But I'm going back to your point that we have over 43,000 alumni and uh, they, they've done very well in their lives. With, with that, we should be able to meet that goal. So it should not be uh, an impossible thing. It, it may be a little tough, but very much doable. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. 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 Yeah, I'm in complete agreement. Yes. No, no, I'm not going that way. Yes.
Yes. No, the, see, the institute has a very clear plan to support the foundation and they've been making investments and there is an institutional commitment towards in this direction. And, and, uh, and I, I, I think it's our goal because we are interacting so much with the external world to take the institute out and bring the external world in. So that is our role is, uh, it started off as a small bridge, we would want it to be an express highway where, where there's a lot of movement and as movement happens, we're able to just come up, build some stuff which is really, really impactful in, in the real world, both for the institute and the society. So, so we, uh, we, we have institutional commitment and we're also uh, uh, trying to see that once the endowment gets built, we are able to generate more resources than uh, the institute, we are primarily focused on, we're an enabler, and we're able to do our job well, uh, we would support the institute. So that's, I think, an implicit thing at this point of time. So great, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would now request Ms. Anjali Joshi, batch representative of class of 1981, to kindly share the experience and say a few words on behalf of the batch. Okay, I need like, I don't think we'll get up on stage. I think what we'll say is let's let's uh, let's recall three fun incidents of your life at uh, Kanpur, and then we can head to lunch. How about that? Any volunteers? No Adya here. Uh, Shrivastavji. Kalya. You just named it. Come on, let's go. Huh? So fear? It's okay. Go for it. Go for it. I am Dr. Suryavanshi. Uh, funny incidents in my life. Uh, very game changing. Uh, just after graduation from IIT Kanpur, 1981, uh, I joined cementation company as a. On campus. Uh, on campus. On campus. Uh, just after the campus. Uh, 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 after the campus. <laughs> After the campus, <laughs> After. on campus. Ah. Yeah, I am Alok Kumar. Uh, I don't know if it's a fun incident, but when we had the mess karmachari strike mm. in the 10th semester, so I think then we shifted to sort of self-cooking in the mess na, and managing the mess. So I just remember my time that one day I made 250 eggs. <laughs> Either omelette, this, this and that. So that <laughs> the fun part. Okay, I, I will tell you the campus funny incident. <laughs> campus funny, funny incident. Actually, my roommate, uh, Mr. Singh, S.K. Singh, he is not here now. 
uh, actually uh, he had a habit of going to lab uh, lib and wahan pe wo corner mein baith ke wo pura padhta rehta tha to usne kya ki ek din saturday ko din gaya aur raat ko and raat ko ek corner mein baith ke so gaya so gaya to library band ho gayi pura light wagera sab off ho gaya and he was sleeping he couldn't get up to raat bhar wo लाइब्रेरी में रहा एंड मैं उसका इंतजार करता रहा आई वॉज वेटिंग फॉर यू मेरा तो बॉस किधर गया तो उसने क्या किया थोड़ी देर के बाद उसको नींद से जागा तो देखता है तो पूरा अंधेरा है बट ही वॉज नोइंग वेयर द लाइट दिस स्विच इज देयर तो उसने नीचे आया वहाँ से स्विच ऑन किया देखा तो किधर जाऊँ मैं अभी देन ही ट्राइड सम फोन कॉल्स फैकल्टी को फ़ोन किया उस किसी बच्चे ने उठाया बोलता है तो बच्चे ने बाबा सो रहे हैं ऐसा करके सो उसने ये कर दिया फिर बाद में उसने क्या किया ही केम डाउन वो मैगजीन सेक्शन में गया वहाँ पे वो सो गया सोता तो उसको बहुत मच्छर काट रहे थे तो उसने पूरे पेपर निकाले पूरे अपने अराउंड पेपर डाल लिए और रात भर वहाँ पर सो रहा था नेक्स्ट डे संडे था आई वॉज वेटिंग फॉर हिम मेस को जब मेस में जाना था और जलेबी वगैरह रहता है तो आई वॉज वेटिंग फॉर यू बट यू डिन कम मुझे ये लगा कि वो किसी अपने पार्टनर के पास सो गया होगा ऐसा लगा मुझे तो बाद में नौ दस बजे वो सडनली आया मेस में तो उसने उसको पूछा बॉस किधर था अरे यार डोंट आस में <laughs> तो उसने क्या किया कि सवेरे मॉर्निंग में जब संडे को सब लोग अंदर जाते थे किताब वगैरह लेने के लिए तो उसको लगा कि मैं अगर लोगों को पता चल गया कि मैं लाइब्रेरी में था तो इट विल बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट सम इंक्वायरी एंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स विल बी देयर तो उसने क्या किया वो मैगजीन सेक्शन के दरवाजे के पीछे छुप गया एंड एज सुन एज द डोन वॉज ओपन ही जस्ट क्वाइटली लिव एंड केम टू देश डायरेक्टली दैट वॉज द इंसिडेंस विच वॉज वेरी फनी फॉर मी so one one incident on the resourcefulness of iit kanpur students so when there was this uh, lizard discovered in the rajma in hall 2 in hall 2 the students decided to go on a hunger strike do ghante ke baad they decided ke to make this efficient they will do it a, they will do a relay hunger strike so people, so people won't eat for 4 hours then <coughs> कैसे With a cover, they would put it on the counter. अच्छा counter के ऊपर tube lights थे, and फिर पतंगे घूमते थे. अच्छा पतंगों के पीछे lizard आते थे. अच्छा, और फिर जब उसका lid हटाते थे, तो steam would go up instantly. Protein would be added to the meals. एक छोटा सा और Uh, हम लोग को इंतजार रहता था फ्राइडे और सैटरडे और संडे का जो मूवीज़ के लिए और अक्सर ही जो वहाँ पे हमारे हॉल थ्री में हमें याद है बिल्कुल मैथ के बाहर ही नोटिस बोर्ड लगा रहता था उसके अंदर लिखा रहता था कितने बजे से कितने बजे तक कौन सी शो है कौन सी मूवी हो रही है तो जब भी कोई सस्पेंस वाली मूवी होती है जिसमें कौन कातिल कौन है मर्डर कौन है तो उसमें नीचे तारा डाल देते ताकि कोई फाड़ ना दे तो उसके अंदर फिर भी स्लिप रहती थी उसके अंदर से पर्चा लिख के डाल दिया रहता था कि इसमें कातिल कौन है या जो मर्डर कौन है तो दो सस्पेंस इज गॉन फॉर अ सिक्स और फिर आप उसको आराम से देखिए आपको पहले से मालूम है कातिल कौन है तो आराम से मूवी देख सकते हैं उसके बाद मिस्टर शरद स्वरूप इफ यू वुड लाइक Thank you sir
And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the ceremony. I would request... Last semester in 1981, in February uh, 1981, my sister was married to a boy of Kanpur. Uh, the bridegroom, bridegroom was uh, in of Kanpur. So after the marriage was over in February, uh, say in March, I went to my sister's in-laws' house in Air Force Colony, Chakeri, near Chakeri. Uh, my Jijaji. First time I was going there, mm, they put a lot of abir and gulal on me, full body, and gave me salty, gave me salty tea also, uh, salt. Instead of sugar, it was a salt. Yeah. So I drank that uh, namkin tea somehow, and uh, finally I came at about uh, dinner time uh, back in hall to mess. When they also ki holi ke baad me April mahina me ye kahan se abir gulal pure badan me laba ke aara hai. There was a huge mass, and I was quite shy being a young fellow. Thank you. अरे मुझे दे दिया तो मैं भी बता देता हूँ. आह ये अभी सभी लोग बोलते हैं कि जो L7 में movie होती थी we used to enjoy that. तो एक मूवी आई थी हम लोग के जमाने में कोहरा और वो मूवी देखने के बाद हम लोगों ने सोचा कि क्यों ना थोड़ा बाहर चला जाए हम लोग पांच छह लोग हैं इनमें से दो तीन लोग तो अभी मेरे साथ हैं एक तो महिपाल जी थे विजयलाल जी थे और आई डोंट रिमेम्बर हु अदर्स तो वो स्विमिंग पूल के बगल से हम लोग बाहर उधर एक कैनाल बहती थी वो कैनाल से भी आगे चले गए जहाँ पर एक खंडहर था उस खंडहर के ऊपर रात के 12 बजे की बात कर रहा हूँ ये सब मूवी देखने के बाद हम लोग वो खंडहर में घुस गए ऐसे ही हम लोगों ने सोचा ये सब ऐसे ही बकवास होता है कुछ नहीं होता है लेकिन जैसे ही खंडहर के अंदर घुसे अंदर देखा तो कुछ टॉर्च वॉर्च लेके गए थे तो देखा नीचे फ्लोर पर बहुत सारा ब्लड पड़ा हुआ था उधर और जैसे ही घुसे अंदर से इतने सारे बैट्स चमगादड़ जोर से निकल गए हम सब लोगों के ऊपर से कान के ऊपर से किसी के ऊपर से हम लोग पूरी तरह से डर गए और भाग के वापस अपने कैंपस में आए थैंक यू सर सो आई वुड नाउ रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर ब्रजभूषण डीन ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड एक्टिंग डीन ऑफ रिसोर्स एंड एलम टू काइंडली कम एंड डिलीवर वोट ऑफ थैंक्स Uh, I feel honored and privileged to get this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks on this special occasion. A very special thanks to Professor Tarun Gupta, Dean uh, Resource, uh, Research and Development at IIT Kanpur for joining us on this occasion. My heartfelt thanks to Batch Coordinator Professor Sudhir Mishra, who could not be here with us today. Oh, great. Now he's there. Uh, Uh, Mr. Uh, Sharad Swaroop and Ms. Anjali Joshi, who graced the occasion with their presence on this 40th reunion. I would also like to thank other deans and all the HODs who contributed in different ways to make this reunion a success. <laughs> Last but not the least, a very special thanks to the office of DORA, IITK, DF, Outreach Cell, VH, and the entire class of 1981, their families and friends. Thank you everyone for taking out the time to be here.